This is what happened. Um, remember, we have two functions named similarly. Function um, info comics prep. Uh, or no, edit. Function edit comics prep. And that's the one I was writing here instead of function show comics prep. So we had we had two, I, I guess just because alphabetically I was writing function, and then I saw prep, and I don't know, I just didn't think about it. And so the correct code to refresh um, the info screen and the table is function show comics prep in this order. So uh, that was the last thing that wasn't quite working. This, if you test it, it should then refresh everything properly. Uh, let me just do one more quick quick thing here. I'm going to do the do the testing again. Remember, you should not assume it's all working. You should test it. So, uh, okay, comic CCC. I'm going in and I'm going to change that to something else. Edit. The original fields were all of this. So I'll call that Catman. Yes, there was a comic called Catman, like from 1940. Uh, I don't know who published it. Let's say Dell. Um, short lived and short haired. Sure. Barcode. Uh, don't worry about barcode at the moment. Uh, update that. So it updated on the info screen. It closed the edit screen. It should have closed the edit screen. Uh, close. I manually close the info screen goes back to the table and it should be refreshed in the table. All of that is because of the um, my mistake about uh, it was the wrong prep function. It should have been function show comics prep that redraws the table. Um, that's one thing. Hopefully you've also been curious uh, inside of your developers console going over to your application and going to look at your index DB and looking at by sequence, and you will see by sequence copies of the old data. This is the cool thing about Pouch that it is keeping track of the old versions of the data. So originally the very first thing I put into the database was AA with, um, com with, uh, with ID AA1, uh, 11, 19, whatever. And then here's where all along we had underscore rev first version of the data with whatever unique 64-bit character or whatever. Eventually then that got changed over to Amazing Comics down here. That one still has the original ID. The original ID doesn't change. Uh, AA1-1999, the same. But now it's the third version of the data. So I had a second version in here somewhere, oh, up here. So by sequence, this was you know the 14th change I made in the database sequentially. Uh, put to this particular data, it was the second change of the data. Uh, the comic CCC was over here as the third entry into the database, and that has CCC 1 1998, and then the latest change I just made right now. It's the 18th data. It's the 18th change overall to the database, but it's the second revision to this piece of data. So this document has an ID and a revision. There's the ID. No need to change that at all, really, just to keep it <coughs> separate in the database. And then um, revision two. You can also view it. Uh, document store. This one shows it as only the IDs, just another way to view it. So <coughs> ID CCC1 1998 is still there and it's simplified to only the five IDs ever, or the six IDs ever changed into the database and then the actual data is then also visible here. So AAA shows here the winning revision is number three. It was the 17th change to the database in total. The third change to this data, there's the ID. Um, I forget exactly, deleted or local, exactly what it means. We can look it up. The actual data then, then is right there. And uh, just another way to look at the data within the developer's console. And these other ones, not nothing to quite look at. We have by sequence, 
and document store. So um, right here I've been testing this this whole time inside of the web browser and um, uh, you should also hopefully be testing on a device. You'll be able to see this. You'll be able to see the data in the device by attaching the um, Chrome Developers tool at some point. The last thing that we'll do is we will we'll set ourselves up a little bit to uh, do the um, the aspect of scanning a barcode and scanning a photo. We're just going to start off just a couple of quick little things. We will do that more completely on um, Tuesday. That's definitely to get the full picture out of this, you need a device. I'm not going to pass out devices at the moment. We're not going to get that far. But next time, you're going to need a device because we're going to use the camera on the device to scan the barcode uh, and um, also um, take a photo. So what we can do here is how we can set ourselves up for that. Um, for the moment, let's close our code, both of the HTML and JavaScript for a moment. All that we've been doing up to this point has been JavaScript, has been jQuery. All of this could work as a website. It doesn't necessarily have to work on a device. <clears throat> We're going to activate a few features that are device only. We're going to use Cordova specific code to access features only found on a device. For example, barcode scanner, camera, vibration, and such. So to take a photo, we need to activate a plugin. And to take a uh, to scan a barcode, we need to activate a plugin. Uh, it was a long time ago, and I forgot. Can you remind me where do I go here to add plugins? Config XML. Yes. Yeah, so let's double click our config XML file to open up the basic features of our app. Config XML. We'll go over to the plugins view. On the left side here, plugins. We have the camera plugin, the ability for us to write JavaScript, which will then be translated per device to then activate the camera on Android, iOS, Windows, whatever. So let's select camera, add. That'll connect back to the Cordova website. It'll find the archive, download it, add it to our site, and then we'll be able to write JavaScript to take a photo. Cordova will kind of get in the middle when we write the JavaScript. Cordova will get in the middle, translate it to Java for Android, if, you're, if your app is on, um, on an Android. Or if it's on an iOS device, uh, your JavaScript, Cordova will get in the middle and translate it basically to Swift or Objective-C uh, to the iOS device. So now we have the ability to take photos, which is different than scanning a barcode. So we need to add now the barcode scanner plugin. If you browse around on the plugins here, do you see it? No. There is no default core Cordova plugin for barcodes. These core plugins are the ones that you most often use. I want geolocation, right? I want my device to know where you're at on a map and such. I want the orientation. I want to know when you rotate and all of that. So all of these are, um, you know, very common. I want to uh, make it vibrate after I. What about this? What about after we delete the database? Make the device shake to let you know something happened. You know, that's something we can add to it. Well, these are all common plugins. We need to add a custom plugin then that is not part of the core. And these custom plugins come from developers all over the world, big and small developers that have put out a plugin to fix a particular, uh, to answer a particular need 
I need to scan barcodes. I need to uh, connect with, you know, a, uh, a Bluetooth headset. I need to do this and that. If there is no built-in plugin, someone probably created a, um, a plugin for it. So I, re I already know which one we want to use. But if you were going to uh, search online anywhere, you would search for something like Cordova plugin for whatever. Like, I need a Cordova plugin that does, you know, barcode scanner as the example. So if you need to do something and it's not one of the built-in devices, uh, one of the built-in plugins, you would go online and search at any search engine, Cordova plugin, and then what you're trying to do. Then you kind of have to read the reviews, how good is it, how does it work, read the documentation. Um, but I have one already that I'd like to use that... Um, what we need to do here is provide the the ID um, or the um, address for it. So it should be phone gap dash plugin dash bar code scanner. Um, so, uh, phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. Uh, this is a unique ID in the re in the global repository of plugins for Cordova slash phone gap. Uh, I might not have mentioned it very very much, but uh, Cordova <coughs> has different flavors. One of the flavors, one of the versions, one of the variations is phone gap. So you may see. Uh, articles written about phone gap it's synonymous with Cordova if you see tutorials on how to do something in Cordova versus phone gap it's the same basically it's just that Cordova is like the generic version and phone gap is Adobe's version Adobe has a version of Cordova with their own sort of like extra stuff so this plugin will give us the ability to scan barcodes when you click the Go button, it should then pop up to tell you. Um, here's the barcode scanner. It's version 711. Uh, the description is right there that it's... What does it say? You can use the barcode scanner plugin to scan different types of barcodes using the device's camera and get the metadata encoded in them for processing within your app. So when we fully set this up, if you ever noticed and you borrowed one of my devices, barcodes. You've got barcodes to play with on these things. Now, if you also notice, you've got a barcode on top of your monitor. I think you've got a barcode on your, uh, on your computer near your leg. So we will be able to test this with barcodes. Even if we don't have a real comic to scan, we're going to have barcodes to, to test this out with. So after I went to custom right here, and I plugged it in here. Um, we click Add. Let's go ahead and add this plugin to add the feature to be able to read barcodes. And actually, this plugin also lets us create barcodes, apparently. I haven't had to do it, but uh, with this plugin, we can read or write barcodes. you want the full documentation for how exactly this works, you can search for the name of this plugin we just installed, and you should see um, the official documentation that will tell you exactly every single detail about how this plugin works. I'm going to put this as a note in the code. I'll just put it as a, as, a, as a text file in the network folder. This is the plugin we want. This is the one that I like that I've used before. There's other ones, but I've used this one. I like it. Uh, it's pretty modern and current. Um, I'm going to put that right now in the network folder. So if you want to go here at some point and read all the documentation on how exactly it works, 
I already have a goal for how it's going to work for us in class. But we want to further explore. So this is the um, Cordova barcode scanner. I'm going to put that in the network folder inside of our MAD3 folder. So this plugin will allow you to read all this variety of barcodes. I never knew there were so many until I uh, started to use this plugin. Uh, you, you can even read QR codes, you know, those ones that are more square, different types of UPC symbols and these other EANs and all of that. So on Android, you will be able to read pretty much all of them. On iOS, pretty much all of them. Um, some of them cannot be read on all devices. It looks like you can't read code 93. I don't know what these actually look like, but um, that particular one is not easily readable on BlackBerry if you still have one, or iOS if you still have one. Uh -huh. um, what else? Uh, the Aztec code, that one's not uh, uh, visible or readable on Android, but it is on these others. We will see how to write the code and how to use it next time. But we're going to write some JavaScript. We're going to have a brand new JavaScript object and method, cordova.plugins.barcodescanner.scan. That'll set up the system, which will launch the camera. Your app will change. You'll have now a camera. Then you can put it on a, well, this has a barcode. So you'll be able to then put it on the barcode. You'll see it here. And it will decode the data. It'll give you back. Look at that—a callback function, a callback function like we've been seeing in in Pouch, but in their case, the syntax is different. You're gonna get a callback function for a positive success, or a callback function for a failure, and then you also have options. So. So the syntax is going to be different than Pouch. But the idea is the same. Uh, we had db.put. Well, here it's longer. Cordova.plugins.barcodescanner.scan. It'll scan. You get a function of success or a function of failure in this order. And then we'll be able to see the object that results. It's text. What was the actual data encoded in the barcode? What format is this barcode for your information? And did you cancel the result? We have other options. Orientation of the camera, which which barcodes only to care about. I only want to scan QR codes. Um, will it make a beep when you scan, yes or no? What's a torch? A flashlight, yes. Other countries in the world call this a torch instead of a flashlight or uh, the flash or whatever. Now these don't have a flash so it doesn't matter but you can have it turn on the the flashlight the torch of your uh, phone to actually view the barcode and other stuff so we'll write a variation of this code next time now here we can encode we can create barcodes as well this one will be cordova.plugins.barcodescanner notice capital s dot encode and then we will be able to create a barcode at the very least, what I want to do today, as we wrap up, at the very least, I want to add the, um, the, the plugins that will allow us to do that. I've added the camera. You can confirm here under installed. Uh, we've added the camera plugin. We've added the uh, barcode scanner plugin. Next time, then we will create a button to press to run the JavaScript to scan a barcode. We will create a button to um, press to then run JavaScript to uh, take a photo. And so the idea there is we're going to take a photo of the cover of the comic or an internal page or whatever, and we will save the photo as part of our database, as part of the comic where we're storing. So uh, we're going to do that in full next time. Questions at, at this point in general about the um, plugins or anything we talked about today? Yes? We'll be adding any more plugins. 
we're going to add a plugin to be able to connect to social media. So uh, maybe we, you know, uh, saved a cool comic and we want to share it on Twitter or Facebook. So we'll have a plugin eventually where we'll be able to share to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <clears throat> email, WhatsApp, whatever. So there's a plugin to share to social media. I watched in your previous class that you added um, email functionality to get feedback. Mm -hmm. That's related to the social sharing plugin, actually. So we'll be able to uh, have that sort of feedback to send us, the developers, some questions or feedback and such. So yeah, we'll do that one too. OK, so um, as, as long as you've done that, very good. Uh, we'll have some lab time in case your code didn't quite work. Um, we'll end at this point. When we come back on Tuesday, we'll go with our next bit of code. We're getting very close to finishing our main app. Then we're going to do some CSS to kind of style things up a little bit. We'll change fonts. I'm getting really tired of these boring fonts. We'll talk about changing fonts. Uh, then before you know it, the app will be done, version 1. And then we will talk about uploading to the App Store. Then we'll talk about creating a version 2 and uploading to the App Store. And then before you know it, potluck. And then the class ends, and then we go on our way. So uh, that's it for the moment. We'll have some lab time.